Hi everyone, so we're going to get started here. Uh, welcome to our webinar on Introduction to CINAHL. Uh, I'm Nicole and this is Angela. We're from the WHA Virtual Library, which serves the staff of the WHA, WHA contracted physicians, and um, staff in the community health agencies and personal care homes. So today we're going to be talking to you a bit about CINAHL, which is an allied health database, and I'm going to let Angela take it away. Okay, so actually uh, the title is really CINAHL, plus full text, and that's important. Uh, it is a nursing and allied health database. Uh, nurses, educators, allied health people, uh, consumers would also be interested in this database. Uh, the reason I mentioned it's plus full text is because it has uh, a broader scope of journals that it, that it indexes. So there's over 700 journals that it covers. So uh, whereas uh, when we were part of the U of M system, their CINAHL would actually come up with less hits than ours does. So that's a bonus. Uh, the coverage, it goes back to 1937, and it includes articles, journal articles, uh, nursing dissertations. Uh, you'll find book chapters in there. Sometimes it'll list videos. Uh, guidelines, uh, conference proceedings, that type of thing is covered in there. So it does cover nursing, biomedicine, alternative complementary medicine, uh, and consumer health, as well as 17 allied health disciplines. So how to get to CINAHL? So hopefully uh, at this point you've bookmarked our uh, homepage. If not, you could probably just Google WRHA Virtual Library and find us and get to our home page. And if you see across the top there, uh, we have some tabs there, home, get access. The one you're looking for is find information. If you click on that, pull down menu comes up with online resources, which is where you want to go. Uh, we have a few, you can see it down at the bottom there on the left-hand side, there's a few quick buttons. But what you'll look for is that alphabetical listing and you would click on C for CINAHL and then scroll down to see where the CINAHL is and click on that. But before we leave this page, I just wanted to mention the other tabs that we have there. So services uh, would be a helpful tab. So we have library training uh, webinars posted there. So such as this one that we're recording today, will be posted on that site if you need to go back and visit this one or we have several other ones there that we've already recorded. Under help, we have some video tutorials. They're one to four minutes in length for frequently asked questions. So if you have uh, you know, questions about how to order an article or a book, you can look there. Uh, we also have information about your password, as how to change your password, as well as how to do a search. So really good at succinct instructions on how to just do a search is under that. Contact information is the next tab. And I encourage you to check out our blog and perhaps sign up for it. This is a great way for you to keep up to date with what we're doing. So if we, when we come up with our next webinar series, uh, you'll be notified by email. When, whenever we get new resources, you'll be notified by email. We recently got read by QXMD. So you won't know about these things unless you come to the library website and check it out or if you sign up for a blog you'll have easy notification. Yeah and when this webinar is recorded it will also be posted on the blog for you to look at later. Yes. Okay so the next page after you've uh, selected C and scroll down to find CINAHL Plus you'll come up with this basic uh, search uh, web page uh, and at this point you can enter any free text you want into that search bar. Uh, you'll see choose database above the search bar and if you click on that you'll see the other EBSCOhost databases that we subscribe to. The ones that we have are Medline with full text, Psychology and Behavioral Sciences. We have a couple of ebook ones, uh, clinical collection as well as a nursing uh, collection as well. So the options below the search bar I'll leave to uh, my colleague to discuss later on because they're a bit of the more advanced features. Uh, but let's, for instance, put something like stroke in the search bar. So the next page you'll be presented with the results. Uh, 
just below the search bar there in the middle, you'll see the search results. We're showing one to 50, you can only see the first one at this point, but there was over 100,000 uh, results that, you that we found. Uh, looking just to the right of that, you can change uh, some of the display options. So this uh, is presenting the search results in order of relevance. And if you pull down that search uh, box, you could change it to uh, by date, either from oldest to newest or the reverse newest to oldest. And I think there's a couple of other options there as well. Um, and the page options is a good one to know about. Right now it's showing you the abstract um, option. And if you wanted to change that, uh, I often go to the brief option so I can just see the title and some the subject headings and the journal citation uh, information so that I can scroll through the 50 easier rather than seeing the abstracts or as many cases people want to see the abstract. You can still get to the abstract even if you have it in the brief uh, format easily enough. So we had over 100,000 results. That's a little too much. So off to the left of that page and now we're on this We've just highlighted it here on the left-hand side of the search page, you have some options to limit your search. Uh, so the top part of that is the refine results, current search is stroke. You could limit it by selecting full text, references available, abstract. More often than not, we use the sliding uh, date bar to uh, narrow the search. So you, lots of times people just want the current 10 years. So you can change that and it will change the results for you. Clicking on show more will provide you with more options, uh, advanced options for filtering the search. But the lower half of that left-hand screen is on the right there. Uh, so lots of times people like to narrow the search to uh, type of items. So if you're only looking for books, you would click that and you would immediately only have 55 results showing. So the other ones there are subjects, the major subjects. Uh, you could go by publication type, publisher, language is often used. So we often select English, sometimes age, sometimes you're only looking for information about children or sometimes only about the elderly. You can make that change there as well as gender and geography. So you also have the option to use the advanced search features, which are found by clicking on the advanced search link under the search bar. And that'll bring you to a page that looks like this. So you see here at the top, we have our first line of the search has our stroke, and we have the option to select a field. So for example, if we only wanted to see results that had stroke in the title, we could select from that drop-down menu title, and that would limit it in that way. You also have the ability to build searches in a clear way using Boolean, which is the and or the or. So if you have multiple terms that you want to combine together, you can use and. So maybe you want to look at stroke and geriatrics. Or you could also use the or to look at uh, various synonyms for the term. So if you wanted to do a stroke or um, brain ischemia, for example, that would be one option for you. You also have a whole bunch of different uh, filter options lower down on the screen, and you can only see a few of them on this page. But they include all the options that Angela has mentioned that are in the filters list. But also, there's also a whole bunch of other different options in there that I'd encourage you to take a look at when you have some spare time. Uh, you have some options like looking only at um, results where one of the authors is a nurse, for example, or results that are about uh, pregnancy, or results that have full text, or results that allow you to search within the full text for your keywords rather than just in the title abstract and subject headings. So there's really a great diversity of options for searching in this list, a lot more than would be available with just the basic search. So I definitely encourage you guys to take a look at this page if you're having trouble narrowing down your search strategy. Another option you can use is subject headings. Now what this means is basically when you do a regular search in just the basic search bar, you search for nursing homes, for example, it'll pull up any article where the term nursing homes is mentioned in the title or in the abstract or in the subject headings or in the keywords, but that doesn't necessarily mean the article is actually about nursing homes. It just means that, that those words appear somewhere. So what the subject headings are is someone has actually gone through and looked at this article and said, okay, is this article actually about nursing homes or does it just use the term, maybe it just says, okay, we're not gonna talk about nursing homes. So that would make it a less relevant result that would still be pulled up with the keyword search. 
but by using the subject heading search, you actually narrow it down to just the articles that are about this specific topic. So the, way you, the easiest way to access the subject heading search is to just click off that little text checkbox above the search bar that says suggest subject terms. And then it'll pull up a list of subject terms that it thinks might be related to the topic that you're looking for. So for example, on this list here, we see nursing home personnel, nursing home patients, nursing home design, home nursing, nursing homes. So you would select the one that is of most interest to you. Now, what you can't see from this screen is that this is actually a hierarchy of terms. So nursing home is a subcategory under uh, health facilities, for example. So what that explode checkbox to the right of the term actually means is you want to look for that term, but you also want to look for all the terms that appear under that in the hierarchy. So if, for example, you were looking at health facilities and you wanted to look at all different types of health facilities at once, you want hospitals, you want nursing homes, you want everything else on that list, you would check off that box to explode the term, and that would include all of those different options in your list. Uh, to the right of that, we have major concepts. So if this is where it's really, really focused on this topic, it's really, really focused on nursing homes as opposed to it just mentions nursing homes and a whole bunch of other things. Finally, to the right of that, there is a scope note. So if you're not exactly sure what the subject heading covers, maybe you're not exactly sure uh, what subject heading suits best for the topic that you're interested in, you can click on that. It'll give you a little blurb about what is covered by the subject heading. By default, uh, the search will include all of the subheadings for your term. However, you can also use the subheadings that are appear on the right of the main subject heading list to further restrict your search. So maybe you're really interested in the economics of nursing homes, how they financially operate. In that case, you would click off the economics subheading. And then it would appear to the right of the screen where you see the terms that you've selected. And if you had selected more than one, you would have the option to do and or or as a selection option. And then you can search your database. The final option we wanted to mention to help you narrow down or construct your search more effectively is the search history option. And you'll find that on the results page just under the search box. And it's called search history. You just click on that and this dropdown will appear. This is really helpful in letting you see what you've already searched, but it also allows you to combine your terms in different ways. So for example, here I've searched stroke as a keyword, and then I searched geriatrics as a keyword, and then I searched nursing homes as a subject heading. That's what that MH indicates. So if I wanted to combine all of these with AND, I could just check off all the checkboxes and click the search with AND button, and it would automatically combine these terms for me and format it properly for me. Now, whatever way you end up deciding to search, you'll get to the results screen that Angela showed you earlier. And from there, you can select uh, whichever article might be of interest to you to see a bit more information about it. So this is an example of a record page. So here we see the title of the article, End of Life Care for People with Dementia in UK Care Homes. So this is a result um, that I pulled up using that search I just showed you with the nursing home subject heading. It shows you all the different information about the source, including what language it's in, what type of publication it is. You've got the abstract, you've got the subject headings there. But what's really cool about this is all of the different uh, blue uh, text you see on this page is actually a link. So you can click on this. For example, if you clicked on um, Reeves Caroline, you would see all the other articles that that particular author has published that appear in this database. If you clicked on Journal of Community Nursing, you'd get to a publication record for that journal which would give you information about who published it, how long has it been published for. It would allow you to search for other articles within that journal, or it would also allow you to browse that journal by issue within the database. Similarly, further down, we see our major subjects, which are the subject headings we've just been talking about. So this can be really helpful if you're, you have found an article you really like, but you haven't really used subject headings before, and you're not really sure how they work. You can look at how this article is indexed and that might give you a good idea about how to proceed uh, with searching for other similar articles. And then on the right side of the screen, we have various options for saving or sharing the article. You can email it, you can print it, you can cite it, uh, so it'll actually format citations for you in various citation styles. Uh, the one other thing I want to mention there is the permalink button. So EBSCO's um, URLs, if you just take the URL from the URL bar, they're not very nicely formatted, they're quite long, and they don't always stick around. So by using the permalink button, you actually get a persistent link, so you know that if you save that link and you come back to it later, you'll end up back on the same record page and you won't get any kind of error message at all. 
So we have several different options for getting access to full text. As Angela mentioned, there are over 700 art, uh, journals that have full text access through this database. So you can actually use the filters that she was showing you to limit it only to those uh, results that have full text by clicking off that full text checkbox on the left side of the screen. You can also access the PDF full text directly from the results page by clicking on that little PDF full text button under the result that I've highlighted in red. If you found an article that you really, really like that doesn't have that link, click on the check library access button to the right of that. And that'll take you to our search system. So you can see maybe we have access to that particular article through a different database. And if we don't, uh, it will allow you to order it through document delivery. So Angela was mentioning earlier some of our services. Document delivery is basically a service where if we don't have this article through some of our subscriptions, we will order this article for you and usually we'll be able to share it electronically with you for free. There's no cost to you for doing this. You can do this as often as you want to. You just have to click on that button and it'll present you with an option to order sources and get that article delivered usually by email to your desktop. So that's a really convenient option for you. If we, you can't exactly find the article that you want or we don't have the full text of it, that's something that you can do for free mm -hmm. to get you that access. Mm -hmm. Now, CINAHL has a few additional features that I wanted to mention. Uh, one of them is the evidence-based care sheets. So you might occasionally see these showing up in your search results, and you can also access them at the, in the blue bar at the very top of your CINAHL screen. So essentially what these are, these are evidence summaries. These summarize the evidence on particular topics for you, and they're intended for, uh, to, for use as a guideline, but also for continuing education purposes. So for example, you can take a look at the evidence-based care sheet on treatment of breast cancer, and it'll summarize the evidence for you on this topic. It'll give you um, a very nicely outlined need to know what you should do for this in clinical practice. It's very, very focused on um, converting the evidence and translating that into your clinical practice. Also in that top bar, you'll see an image search option. CINAHL doesn't have a ton of images, but it actually has quite a few very nice graphs that are being pulled out of various articles. So this search allows you to search for those um, directly rather than having to track down an article and then looking within to see if maybe it has some nice images, you can actually search for those directly. Uh, you can also do that from the advanced search page. There's some options way down at the bottom of that page. Like I said, that page has a lot of different options on that. So definitely take a look at that when you've got time. Another tool we have is the Citation Matcher. So if you've heard of this great journal article by so-and-so and you want to see if this article is indexed in CINAHL, uh, you will use the Citation Matcher tool. You would input as many different um, details about the article as you know, like maybe you know the author and the title, for example, you can input those in. And similar to some of the features in some of our other databases, like PubMed has a similar feature, different things like that, it'll actually try to pull up that exact article for you. So that way you don't have to remember, oh, what's the formatting for searching title? You don't have to fill out the whole form of title and author and whatever else. You can just use a single form and it'll pull, try to pull up that article for you. Uh, the last item that I want to mention, I'll actually go back a couple of slides here to demonstrate this. Uh, is the smart text searching option. So you see a couple different options here on the left side of the screen. This is on the records page. Uh, it's find similar results using smart text searching. So essentially what this is, is CINAHL will look at an article and it'll decide what some of the perfect keywords to search for this article will be. And then it'll use those to try to pull up articles in its database that it thinks might be similar to this one. So for example, if you look at an article on end of life care for people with dementia, in UK care homes, maybe it'll find one on US care homes, or maybe it'll find one on end of life care for people with Parkinson's disease. So it'll really um, do a lot of the work for you in terms of figuring out what it is it thinks you want. And it might not always be 100% correct in that, but it'll at least give you a starting point to try to locate articles that might be relevant to you. You also see here the cited references option. So that is another uh, way of finding similar results in that it'll look for articles which cite this particular result. And that'll help you to sort of chain backwards and forwards in the citations to find what newer articles have looked at this one and might have built on its findings, for example. So that basically brings us to the end of our presentation. 
Uh, we're happy to take any questions in the chat box if you have any questions. And if you'd like to follow up with us later, we've got our phone numbers and email addresses on the screen here. Please feel free to let us know if you have any questions, if you want to go over certain elements of CINAHL in more depth. Uh, we're also happy to do the research for you and do a literature search on whatever topic might be of interest to you. Uh, we do systematic review support, we do current awareness alerts. We're always happy to help with any questions or concerns that you might have. But for the moment, mm -hmm. uh, we will just mute ourselves and hang out for a few minutes to see if anyone has any questions. And if not, uh, we will end the webinar shortly. Thank you all for listening. Again, I'm Nicole. This is Angela. And thanks, guys. Thank you.